In this video, I'm going to tell you about some horror books that you might not have heard of but definitely need to read. In the month of June, I am co-hosting The Amazing Readathon hosted by Brie from Four Paws and a Book, and there are sightseeing prompts that you can complete throughout the month, and one of them is to read a book under 1,000 ratings on Goodreads. At the time of filming this, all of these books are under 1,000 ratings on Goodreads. Obviously, that number will go up over time, but I still think these books are incredibly underrated and they deserve more readers. I gave all of the books in this video four, four and a half, or five stars, so I highly recommend them all. A lot of the horror books that I have been loving are vastly underrated, so you can expect more videos like this from me in the future. So I have nine books to talk to you about today. These are like the most underrated of my underrated books. There are plenty of others that I believe are underrated, but these were all of the ones that were under 1,000 ratings at the time of filming. So first up is Knock Knock Open Wide by Neil Sharpson. This is a horror book that weaves in Celtic mythology. It deals with family drama and familial trauma and secrets. So at the very beginning, we are following Etain and she is at a party and she is driving home in the middle of the night and she happens to come across a corpse on the side of the road and dogs are attacking it and she decides like that's not humane I'm gonna fight these dogs get this corpse into my truck and drive it to the nearest farmhouse so she does that and then the weirdest experience happens to her while she's there and it ends in the house on fire and her fleeing so then we are following two decades later a character named Betty who is going to college and she finds herself invested in the local theater department and also another student named Ash who goes there. Ash, her mom, just happens to be Etain from the very beginning. So we are slowly throughout the book figuring out kind of what happened to Etain in the past, how that impacted her, which then impacted her daughter Ash, and how that impacts other people around her. Betty ends up studying mythology and the things that happen in this book are just so weird. Ash decides that everything that happened to her family is because of this TV show. So she tries to get involved with that, but also is trying to keep these secrets from Betty. The TV show is really weird. It's one of those instances, oh, what is that called? The Mandala effect, where like people remember parts of it differently. Ash remembers a small black goat coming out of a box, but nobody else seems to remember that. The goat was a puppet, by the way, <laughs> but the puppet only comes out when children are not behaving. Very interesting. There were just so many unique situations in this book I found it very compelling. It is more of a dense read. It took me a while to get through it but it has been one of my favorite books of the year. I think the way that it was done was so interesting and just like this sense of dread and not knowing what is happening in any of these situations was just so interesting to read. Next up is Maggot's Screaming by Max Booth III. You might have heard of his slightly more popular we Need to Do Something, which is one of my favorite books. Maggot's Screaming is quite an interesting one. I cannot tell you much about this book because you want to be surprised with what is happening. The synopsis just says that we are following a father and son in Texas on a very hot day, following what happens when they find three corpses in their backyard. This one is so weird. The things that happen in this book, it's very funny. Like, it's a, a kind of quirky book. It feels kind of different from We Need to Do Something. There's a lot of very interesting situations that this father and son find themselves in in this book. It's a weird time. I wish I could tell you more, but it was not what I was expecting. This is a very funny horror book. It has some gross stuff in it, and I had a really great time with it. Next, we have In Excess of Dark by Red Lego. This is grief horror. It is a novella. We are watching a woman who has just lost her son and husband in a car accident, and she, throughout her life, has had this experience where she imagines terrible things and it comes true. So she doesn't like have hardcore proof of this happening, but she has multiple instances throughout her life where this really feels like it is the case. So she is obviously dealing with grief from losing her family, but also guilt in feeling like she caused part of this 
or all of it to happen. And then she starts to see these like vague figures that she thinks is her family. And we are watching her kind of slowly lose her mind dealing with these things, feeling like people in her real life don't get it. They don't believe her. It's a very interesting story. I think it's done so well. I think if you liked Crossroads by Laurel Hightower, this is a great one to read. It is a heavier read dealing with grief and guilt and depression and things like that, but I highly recommend it. Next up is Under the Blade by Matt Serafini. This is a mix of a slasher and cult horror. So we are following a main character who in the past as a teenager, she was the lone survivor of a slasher at her local summer camp. And now she is a teacher who is about to lose her job and decides that she is going to write a book about her experiences at the summer camp. So she goes back and is kind of doing a little bit of investigating, getting all of the details for things. And then there's the local sheriff who is kind of put in charge of watching her because everybody is like, she is gonna destroy the town. So we are watching her doing research on the things that are happening, figuring out why this town seems to be so set on her not getting answers. I had a really good time with this. There's a strong mystery that is driving this plot. It has the slasher elements in it because the person that did this in the past, she thinks is still alive. There's also the sketchy town. All around this is a very good time. The next recommendation is Clowns vs. Spiders by Jeff Strand. This one is so Funny. So we are following a group of clowns who work at the local circus and the owner has to let this whole group of clowns go. They love being clowns. Their personality is being a good clown and they hate the idea of creepy clowns and everything that comes with that. But they either have to stop being clowns or they can be clowns at a local haunted house attraction. They desperately don't wanna do this, but even more so, they don't wanna give up their clown life. So we are watching their first night in the haunted house. Things are not going well because they are miserable and like scaring children is not fun. But then there's an attack and they decide they're going to defend all clowns honor by fighting giant spiders. This is a very funny book, but there's also a lot of action in it. I found myself getting emotional. Like I really liked the characters in here. There's lots of bug stuff. Obviously there's giant spiders. I had such a fun time with this one and I highly, highly recommend it. The next recommendation is another horror novella and that is Bad Movie Night by Patrick Lacey. We are following a man who is a YouTuber. Him and his group of friends have found major success in reviewing very obscure movies online. They have a huge channel. They are able to like have a studio and our main character is the one who is like really in charge of everything. He does all the editing. He has started living at the studio. This is in second person, which was really weird. They have been sent a copy of a very elusive movie. Nobody can find it. Nobody really knows the specifics of it, but they watch it and very quickly our main character starts to lose his mind. There are multiple accounts of people who have seen this starting to experience these flashbacks of the scenes in the movies like they were part of it. So these things are starting to happen to him and he is investigating, trying to figure out where the copy of the movie that was sent to them came from, why this is happening. This was such an interesting one. I really was not expecting a lot of the things that happened in here. I think the choice to make it in second person was really interesting. Like you felt more like you were losing your mind with the character. It's a super quick read that I really enjoyed. Next, I have Antioch by Jessica Leonard. This is set in a small town where nothing bad ever happens, but now six women have gone missing and have been found murdered. And he is dubbed Vlad the Impaler due to the gruesome crime scenes of his victims. So we are following Bess and she's a bookseller and she has become convinced that a seventh victim has been captured. She believes this because she is obsessed with her shortwave radio and here's a transmission that leads her to believe that Amelia Earhart is contacting her. It's weird. This is like a conspiracy theory book. She has really felt <laughs> the calling to investigate this mystery. She's going around trying to figure out who the seventh victim is and 
trying to stop the murder from happening. This one is so interesting. Like, it leans hard into the conspiracy theories. Like, there's a lot of stuff with Amelia Earhart in here. And this one has one of the most ambiguous endings that I've ever read. I would argue that it almost doesn't have an ending which I know could bother a lot of people, but it still really worked for me. Our character is just so obsessive and interesting to be in the mind of, and like, we don't really know if we can believe her or not. And I had a really surprisingly good time with this one. Next up, I have a holiday horror book, Candy Cane Kills by Brian McCauley. This is part of the Killer VHS series that Shortwave Press does. This is the only one that I have read, but I want to go back and read the first one. The third one has come out, and then the fourth one is a sequel to this. So we are following a family who is not great. They don't specifically like each other, and his parents have decided that going on a family vacation is going to be the thing that like saves them as a family. They get there and the like real estate like owner lady is really creepy and then they go to a local diner and someone was like do you know about the murders that happened there and they're like uh no but it's snowing they can't really leave they don't want to lose the money that they put into this they can't get a refund at this point so they go and they stay and there's some slashing that happens. At this house, there was a local family who was viciously murdered, and Candy Cane is slashing through the snow with a very long naughty list. I did not read this around Christmas at all, and I still think it was such a good time. For me, this had a lot of interesting stuff in it with the backstory, and it like made me kind of emotional, but it was also very fun and fast paced and had some fun kill scenes in it. And very opposite vibes. The last book I have to talk about in this video is Paradise Club by Tim Meyer. We are following an FBI agent who works too hard and his boss is like, you need to take a break. So he's forced to go on a trip with his family. It is a resort on an island and on the boat on the way there, they're like, you have to give us your phones. And they're like, uh, weird, but they do it. Don't ever do that. <laughs> So they get there and very quickly find out that an event is taking place at Paradise Club that wasn't on the brochure, a dangerous game pitting the hotel's guests against a gang of bloodthirsty maniacs. So we are watching our main character trying to survive, keep his family safe, and there's lots of slashing that happens. This one has a weird ending that I thought was interesting and I enjoyed, but just be warned, it's, it's a strange one. So those are nine horror books that are super underrated and I think you should check out. All details for the amazing readathon are linked in the description. If you've made it to the end and want to leave me an emoji to say you were here, you can leave me a skull for Paradise Club. And I hope to see you soon. Bye!